The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. It's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve Levin enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and coming soon to HamiltonRadio.net every Thursday night at 9 and also and other networks to follow as well. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash me and Mosinzia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also cool merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, hoodies, and more. Amazon.com slash me and Mosinzia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Weiner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Weiner Show.com. And make sure you buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Weiner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who's a wife, mother, daughter, and lover of all literary. We'll talk about that. She's also got a book called Mast Intent, and she's also a journalist by training, holds degrees from University of Virginia and Columbia, also began as a business reporter for uh, Poughkeepsie Journal, and went on to Crane Communications as international publisher of um, business and trade magazines, also periodically contributes to Advertising Age, and uh, also... Um, she, she also uh, had led some uh, creative uh, conducted led strategies, marketing for uh, several global companies, also launched um, a boutique marketing firm, did some consulting, and currently an adjunct professor at uh, Georgetown University. We'll talk about that. And the brand new book takes a taut, complete look on how we hide behind in authenticity to guide through interpersonal relationship and um, also a backstory behind it too. It's called Mast in 10 and live ladies and gentlemen from the plus studios in beautiful downtown Washington, DC, the amazing wife, mother, daughter. And of course she loves literature. The very multi-talented author of Mast in 10, Kim Greer, Kim, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mike. How are you? Thanks for having me. Well, I'm doing great and glad to have you on board as well, too. It's your wife, mother, and daughter, and lover of all literary, and you're a journalist by trade. You also hold degrees from University of Virginia and Columbia University. You began your career as a business reporter for Poughkeepsie Journal and went on to Crane Communications as an international publisher of uh, business and trade magazines and also periodically contributed to Advertising Age, and you also um, – you also conducted and led uh, strategic and marketing communications for several global companies. You launched a boutique marketing firm, did some consulting. You're also a current uh, adjunct professor at uh, Georgetown University. And your new book talk, takes a taut, complete look and, and uh, how we're behind the uh, inauthenticity to guide through interpersonal relationships and more. And there's a little backstory behind it too called Mast Intent. And before getting to all that, Kim, tell us how it first got started. Well, sure. Well, I've always been a storyteller. 
Mm. I think from the time of 12 years old, I got into writing short stories and was encouraged by my English teachers, the first of whom was my mom. Mm. And so I just kept I kept with it. I just kept writing. I think that if you look for a common thread behind all of the jobs I've had, it is storytelling. In order to be a brand agent, you have to be a storyteller. It has to be something that you ought to relate through pictures and messaging. When you are a teacher, you're telling stories in order to engage your students. And so I think that's kind of the common thread. But I left journalism because I realized it was right around the time when I realized I was not going to be the female Walter Cron- Cronkite. Mm. That had been my goal. I wanted to tell stories. I wanted to uh, disseminate information, but it was right around the time when, at least from my perspective, journalism, journalism was, tr- tr- I'm sorry, was changing from being information driven to being advertising driven. Mm. And it really wasn't something that I w- wanted to do. And I didn't like the uh, scrutiny of the stories that I was writing, because a lot of them had to do with whether or not they would be placed in the same issue as a particular advertiser. And it just wasn't why I got into it. And so I decided to with the corporate route, but kind of always kept my story writing on the side. And like so many would be writers or want to be writers when the pandemic hit, I decided to pull it out, dust it off and see what see what I got. Mm-hmm. And mass intent was the result. Mm-hmm. And before we talk the book as well, too, it made me think, too, that I was a journalist back in the day. It was more sports. Mm-hmm. Right. You talked about the information. Right. But then it's like, wasn't advertising back then considered taboo as well? If you like, say you did a story on so and so and it was tied to advertising. Wasn't that right. taboo back then? It was supposed to be. But at the, because I worked for trade publications, it was kind of a handshake under the table when it wasn't it, it wasn't overt, but I saw it going on. And, you know, I was bright eyed, bushy tailed and full of ethics fresh out of of grad school. It just wasn't what I wanted to do. It Mm -hmm. didn't engage me. It it became boring after a while. And Mm -hmm. so I realized that maybe my, my attentions were more in telling stories of my own making rather than disseminating news. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that trend has been going on as well too. It's like, instead of a talking head, like Walter Cronkite, who actually just told you straight without any left, right, or any slant like that, you know, you had a talking head, Walter Cronkite, CBS, Harry Reasoner, ABC, Floyd Calvert, NBC, then you had um, McNeil Lara. Those are the ones that really Mm, trust, you know, talking head and everything else. And um, was it one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? I was a daily reporter. And as a business reporter, so covering daily news was not something I was accustomed to, but I was the only one in the office that particular day. And so the city editor asked me to cover a funeral of a teamster in upstate New York. Hmm. And I couldn't figure, you know, what is my goal here? The only thing he wanted, it wasn't to get the coverage of the actual funeral. It was to get a quote from then Governor Mario Cuomo. Hmm. Because we were a small, tiny little paper, and Cuomo at the time had the reputation for only speaking to Albany state-based reporters, and I was not that. And so that became my challenge. But it wasn't so much just to get the quote. I think it was to say this paper had the quote. And I felt like that was a bit of a misplaced carrot dangled in front of me. I, I didn't really see the value. I wasn't successful. Um, his people flanked around him in a way you, I mean, I, I understand, yes, this is a governor and you're not going to let just anyone come up to him. But I felt like it was just, you know, a human shield blocking me. And that was, it was a symbolic representation, but it also kind of hit me with, you know, I, this is not what I came here to do. This is not news. This is you know, something else. This is titillation or something. And the dress wasn't what attracted me to the craft at the time. Mm -hmm. And who are some of your favorite uh, authors and writers and especially uh, journalists growing up? Oh, sure. I loved I loved Walter Cronkite. I mentioned that I love Dan Rather and I still love him to this day. Mm -hmm. But I also was very into fiction. And this is going to sound really weird. My favorite book of all time is Crime and Punishment. I love Dostoevsky. (laughs) Yes. Crime and Punishment. That's a classic. I love, I love, I love Russian literature. I think it is dark. I think it is bleak, but I think I'm not going to say that you can see some of the influence of that in my writing, but I do take a a while to tell my stories, a while to have them unfold, because my goal is to tell stories that impact society, that aren't just necessarily lighthearted reads, that are some sort of commentary and that contain messaging beyond the words on the page. Mm -hmm. And what about some of your other books as well, too? And uh, what other genres um, that also uh, influence you and uh, interested in? 
Oh, sure. I love romance. I'm a romance junkie. And so Kennedy Ryan is a huge fan favorite of mine. Um, she is an, an indie author. And so that's also another reason why I've kind of you know, tried to pattern what I'm doing. I have some steps to take yet, but trying to pattern what I'm doing after her. Um, I also enjoy Sierra Simone and I enjoy, um, gosh, who else? There's so many. Uh, Talia Hibbert. There's so many really, really great romance novelists. Um, I used to be a mystery buff. So James Ooh. Patterson, um, Mary Higgins Clark. But I think that, you know, I'm not so much, a, I don't know that I have a talent for writing genre literature. So I read it, but I don't know that I would ever try my hand at that. Mm -hmm. And how about some of your favorite books as well or novels, your other ones? Oh, sure. Um, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Definitely. Um, that was one of the early ones that my parents gave me by James Baldwin. Um, gosh, I read so many different things. Uh, you know, Malcolm, uh, this isn't a novel, the book, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, The Tipping Point. I listened to that over and over again. You always get something different from that. Outliers. I mean, he's just a wonderful, wonderful writer. Um, I was a huge New Yorker junkie. I caught that bug when I was in graduate school and haven't quite given it up. Um, and so, yeah, I just, I read, I read wide, I read long, I read broad, the longer, the better, um, the more Russian literature in there, the better mm. Nabokov, everyone, <laughs> you, you know, you know, Russian literature, you made me think about it as well, too. I also think along the lines, you know, that's an offshoot of Russia, which was going on at the time was animal farm. And I remember that, uh, back uh, in the day mm -hmm. where it's just like, you know, yeah, how like the, the message was. People abuse power, power abuses people, right. and was made to a cartoon like with pigs, horses, and everything right. else. And it looked uh, cute and cuddly, but there was a serious message to it. That also happened in right. Russia as well, like the power struggle. Right, exactly. You know, another novel uh, that comes to mind, Fahrenheit 451, Ray Bradbury. And, oh, yes. you know, just a few months ago, we were talking about books that should be banned. And, you know, that's the whole backdrop of, of that novel about how books have been cast out of society because they they're um, affecting our minds in a way that no one wants we're burning books and i kind of feel like we've gone back to that so you know not to, i i don't think that i'm a dystopian author but i think that all of those dystopian themes definitely influence kind of some of my bearing as a writer and some of the thinking about what i want to do going forward Mm -hmm. Which, which you, you talk about the the banning of books and everything else. Which books you felt mm -hmm. should have been banned? Which books you felt should have not been banned? You totally disagree with. Do you know? I don't believe in book banning. I, I think agree. it was Isaac Isamoff who said that it, uh, any book worth being banned is worth being read, and so I, I just don't see that anything along the way. You know, Lolita. Um, you know, it's it's a it's a tawdry story to be sure. But these stories come from somewhere. Art definitely imitates life. And so, you know, I don't see the I don't see the danger in reading a fictional story, having that bleed out into bad behaviors. I think bad behaviors are learned. They're reinforced, but they're not necessarily picked up on the pages of books. Hmm. That's really interesting as well, too. And we'll talk about your book, Mass Intent, in just one minute. But first, to listen to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. 3960 or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention to Mike Widener's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and George by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today, Four Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms coming soon to hamiltonradio.net every Thursday night at 9 Eastern. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today for great gift ideas. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia 
for great books, merchandise, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Weiner Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Weiner Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Weiner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the uh, amazing wife, mother, daughter, and lover of all things literary, Kim Greer on the Mike Widener Show. We'll talk about the book, um, Mass Intent, as well, too. And, of course, um, after you uh, made the jump from journalism over as well, too, you also got involved with um, conducting a strategic marketing communication communications for uh, several global companies. You also launched a boutique marketing firm, consulting, and currently you're an adjunct professor at uh, Georgetown University. You really know how to, to keep busy as an author. I do. Um, actually, I'm not with Georgetown anymore. I oh, you're not? Position. Okay. All right. No, I'll, I'll put not. that down. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, however, yeah, I, I guess, you know, again, storytelling is the common thread through all of these, all of these uh, kind of positions, these, these travels that I take. I really enjoy the creative process. Branding is something that I truly enjoy. Uh, I enjoy also being an independent contractor. And so that's been a, a, you know, a wonderful experience as well. But it's all been leading up to being a writer. I, I believe that that is the, that's the crux of who I am. It's what I do. It's where I'll go. Mm -hmm. And of course, of all the professions you've been in, what would you say your favorite story would be if you were to sit down and write a story like you've, um, you, you've been with Poughkeepsie Journal, like say Advertising Age, or say you're with uh, Georgetown or anything like that. It's like, what would be your favorite story to write about? I was an advertising columnist in Cleveland with Crane's Cleveland Business. Oh, and wow. I okay. loved I loved the marketing column that I wrote every other week because it basically was an advertising gossip column. And you're too me. ethical about this. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, when I say gossip, it wasn't about, you know, who, sorted things. It was I about know, contracts kidding. coming <laughs> and going, right? <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was very informative because it also gave some indication as to the types of businesses that were moving in and out of Cleveland. And so I felt like I had a scoop on the local daily paper. I was only writing once a week, but I still had, I was able to pack my column with news from advertising agencies because if anybody, if, if, they're, if you want to find someone in the know, PR folks are in the know. And so they would feed me information. I, you know, I would chat them up, they chat me up. And it was just great fun every week to compile that information. I'd love to maybe write a book about that someday. Mm -hmm. It was great. And speaking of Cleveland as well, too, I know they mm -hmm. had their ups and downs. They almost filed for bankruptcy. And then I think uh, somewhere a decade later, they became really artsy, put in a rock and roll hall of fame. They right. got rid of that steel belt image. Where, where were you right. at the time? You know, you know, when you're in Cleveland, was it like in a down period where it's like they're about to file for bankruptcy or was it like um, they they got they became a uh, real artistic like rock and roll hall of fame and right. uh, improved. Um, what, what was it? Um, I'm trying to think of that ballpark in Cleveland. What do they call it? Like. Uh, uh, right. The, uh, they used to call it the mistake by the lake, the, the brown. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And it was it really I, aptly named. I've never been to a colder place ever. Um, the Indians at the time, the guardians now also played right there on the lake. And it, it was just a, a hellish experience. I was in Cleveland right around the time though, uh, post bankruptcy, they were in a resurgence. There is an area, uh, targeted towards young people called the flats and a lot of bars and entertainment. And that had been cleaned up and very nicely policed. And the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was under construction at the time. So I never got the chance to see it while I was there. But it was it was on the rebound. It was on it was taking a nice rebound. And I think that the city still has its challenges. But I really do think there's just so much yet to happen for Cleveland. It's it's a it's a great experiment that hasn't yet taken off. And I'm sure it's going to take some time as well, too. Could you imagine doing a little advertising gossip on LeBron James? What did he think? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, yeah, that was a big deal. Uh, when I was in Cleveland, LeBron James was selected. He had just gotten drafted and he was selecting his agent. And that became huge news because he did not select one of the big agents. Really? He selected. No, he selected a friend who I believe wow. is his agent to this day. It was someone he'd known from childhood or you know, at least through, through the teen years. And his thinking was, you know, I've trusted him this far. He's been with me. He was with me before I was famous. I trust him to handle me now that I am. Hmm. That's a rather interesting one. I did not know he had an Asian as a breast fan. He could have been with like Lee Steinberg or, uh, or right. John Boris or any of the big agents. But I mean, that's a right. really inspirational story. I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so amazing. 
And of course, you know, we'll, we'll get your book as well, too, with um, your new book, uh, taking a taut, complete look and how we hide behind inauthentic to guide through a interpersonal relationship that's uh, Mast Intent and uh, tell us more about the book and uh, what inspired you to write uh, Mast Intent? Well, I used it for a very short time. I was a middle school English teacher and I was struggling to find a way to get my students to write. And I decided, okay, I'll write with you. So let's take 20 minutes out of every class. I will sit down behind my computer and you write too. And that's when the book was born. I started writing some of the more romance related parts of the book. And so I felt like I was you know, cheating, doing something you know, kind of naughty in the classroom, which kind of powered me to do it. But I realized after a few weeks of doing that, I had a few hundred pages and I had wow. something there. But I set it aside and I didn't do anything with it until the pandemic struck, uh, you know, got off doing other things, raising family, taking care of parents. And then once we did have kind of quarantine hangover, I decided, let me take a look at this again. But the world had changed and about 10 years had passed mm -hmm. and the world had changed. And the biggest thing that influenced me was the changing definition of what truth means. Mm. And so I got this idea that let me take the romance story that I have, and I'm going to have it narrated by truth. So I personified the truth. And at the beginning of the book, she's pissed off with humankind because she feels that people no longer recognize her. And she wants to show the dangers and the perils of that. And she uses this love story as an allegory. And it talks about how as the, the two main characters try to decide whether or not they want to have a relationship, the thing that gets in the way is the lies that they've told themselves about their past relationships. There's a whole lot of self-deception in the way. There's a whole lot of wearing of masks, not being your authentic self as you try to connect with other people. And it drives them farther apart instead of bringing them closer together. And so there are various periods throughout the book when Truth narrates about this. She gives her commentary. She foreshadows in some places. She brings in her sister's accountability and honesty to kind of help keep pace with what's going on in the story as well. And the whole idea is to just kind of take a look at the fact that we are the, some of the biggest deception happens within ourselves. There are lies we tell, we choose to believe, and we, it's okay, but it's not okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what the book is taking a look at. And do you think social media also plays in this as well? Absolutely. hundred percent. Absolutely. You know, the whole idea about alternative facts and, and alternative truths and I, I'm not one to believe in that idea, but I have since come to, I won't say accept, but understand that there are some folks who define truth by their own experiences, based on what they know, what they've been taught, what they've grown up believing and feeling. And the world at large may not be able to change that, but I don't think that it changes the definition of what truth is ultimately. Truth is immutable. And that's kind of one of the overall themes in the book. Truth, my personified narrator says that. Um, and I'll give a little bit of a spoiler. She's, uh, she's taunting influence. And so influence is going to have something to say in the coming sequel. Mm, so you got a sequel coming up. And then uh, I do. You, and then you talked about the writing a book like, you know, some 10 years ago, up until a pandemic, right. when you decided to pull it out. Mm -hmm. What was truth considered back then, um, 10 years ago compared to now? Well, I can tell you, truth was not an element of the book back then. It started out being just kind of a straight love story. I was going to write a romance and see if I could get it published. So truth really didn't play any, any role in it. But I'm happy that I didn't finish the book, number one, then, because <laughs> I think it would have been a lot less impactful. The characters certainly would not have been as developed. And I don't know that it would have touched my heart as much as it does now. I I'd really kind of like this idea of truth trying to teach us a lesson. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in what way, uh, what, how would that teach a lesson? Well, she is that the book is called Mask Intent. And her, her premise is that we all wear masks because we don't like to live in our authentic skin. But that's dangerous because at the end of the day, you lose yourself. You lose yourself. You're, you lose the benefit of honest, pure interactions with others. And it's no way to live in peace. It's no way to live in grace, but it is the way society is going. And we need to make a decision. Is that who we want? Is that the nation we want to be? Is that the world we want to be? Because that doesn't foster trust and, and camaraderie between people. It continues to pull us apart. 
Mm-hmm. And of course, you wonder, it's like, where do you draw the lines and where were authentic- authenticity uh, takes a back seat? It seems like power is, is just really getting very right. prevalent these days, like division, right. power, right. seduction, evil right. forces. It's really right. getting prevalent out there. Right, right. And that's, that's discussed a, a great deal in the book also. There is a bit of a subplot that involves my main character, Alexa, is a PR executive, and she represents uh, an owner, uh, CEO of a, an international uh, oil company, and he is a huge power player. And with all the things that you might expect of some of the less scrupulous power players, that is who this person is. And she has decided she doesn't want to work with him, but she has to separate her personal truths from her job from her responsibilities. And if we take a look a bit at what a personal toll that takes, how we step outside ourselves in the name of earning money, building career, whatever the case might be, but she's not unscathed by that. And so we talk about you know, the power, the decadence. Um, he, is, he is quite a bit of a um, charlatan. And so that's discussed as well. And Alexa ends ends up having to make a choice, this job or my life. Mm. And I won't give a spoiler, but she has to, she makes that decision and the action moves on from there. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting as well too. And, uh, and and, and what do you want readers to uh, get from the book? I want readers to take a look at themselves and in a 24 hour period, how often are you honest with yourself? When you look in the mirror, can you honestly say that I've been this authentic representation of myself today or I've been my avatar? Because I think most of us are avatars. You know, we want to be we want to be a bit funnier. We want to be a bit cooler. We want to be a bit prettier. And so we hide behind these pretty little masks. But at the end of the day, we're losing our, 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 our authentic selves. And I don't believe that that's any way to live. And that's what I want my readers to think. I want my readers to reconsider this 21st century kind of living our best life lifestyle that we've adopted. That is a really good point. I have to say that, of course, we'll have to double check our Facebooks, Instagrams, Twitters and everything. Sometimes you got to be really careful out there. And right. um, where can we find your book, uh, Mast and Tendak? Sure. So it's on Amazon.com, but it's also on, if you go to your local um, bookstore, you can have them order it through Ingram Spark. Uh, It is, uh, if you want to just go on barnesandnoble.com, it's available there as well. We will certainly do so. We're with uh, author Kim Greer of Mass and 10 here, the Mike Widener Show. And uh, what's coming up for Kim? We'll find out just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with author Kim Greer of Mass and 10. After this time, the Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with author Kim Greer of Maston 10 here on the Mike Widener Show. She's also wife, mother, daughter, lover of all liter- literary, and uh, talked about her amazing career in journalism, side projects, and everything else in the corporate world, and uh, her book, Maston 10. Also, a few more things, Kim. You've been amazing. And what else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond? 
So I'm working on the sequel to Masked Intent. It's called Intents and Purposes. And as I teased a little bit earlier, Influence becomes our narrator. And so she and Truth are going to have it out a little bit. Before I publish Intents and Purposes, there is a prequel to Masked Intent that I've been working on, and it's called Intermezzo. It is a collection of short stories that give the origin stories of some of the key players in Masked Intent. And I think it'll be a nice bridge between the first book and its sequel. Oh, I'm certainly looking forward to it. That'd be so great. Walter's not involved. <laughs> and and, and uh, just a couple of things. Who do you consider biggest influence in your career? My mom. My mom, bless her. Um, my mom was a, she taught me to read very early. She taught me to write and always encouraged me to chase my dreams. And I really wish she was here today to see this, but I have a feeling somewhere she's looking down and smiling. And I'm sure she is as well too. And saying, well done. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Whatever your dream is, go after it. Life is too short not to. Oh, that is really well put. I got to say that just like a journalist straight into the point. That's so amazing. <laughs> That's it. Once again, we're with author and uh, journalist, uh, Kim Greer here on the Mike Wagner show. And uh, Kim, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. And once again, okay. tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact? Where can people purchase or check out your book, sure. Mass Intent? Sure. So you can visit my website, kimgreerwrites.com. If you'd like to email me, it's Kim at KimGreerWrites.com. You can find me on Twitter at, at Words and Muses. That's W-O-R-D-S-A-N-D-M-U-S-E-S. -E and I'm on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Kim Greer Writes. We will certainly check those out. Once again, Kim, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you soon. You, Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'll have you back. We wish you all best. You've got a great future ahead of you. Thanks so much, Mike. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing. Available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.